epic harvest we made this month a tour of the california garden a delicious recipe some things to do in your garden all this and a lot more coming up So let's begin with all the harvests we made this month beginning with beans we were growing bush beans in this whiskey barrel container and this is a bush type bean which is a very compact plant compared to pole beans and beans grow very well not only in the summer months but also towards the fall season and bush beans will give you a very good harvest even in small spaces you can look at a harvest here of these bush beans they look very good moving on to sapodilla also called sapote or chiku this is a very unique tropical fruit now you are supposed to do a scratch test before you harvest it and you can see here it's slightly yellow a little bit towards green but i noticed that most of the fruits were a little soft so it was time to harvest them and you can look at the sapodilla fruit here beautiful looking fruit and once again i was trying to scratch but the sapodilla fruit felt a little soft so i went ahead and harvested them anyways you can look at our harvest here beautiful looking sapodillas and in this dwarf plant we just got 3 this year but i'm hoping for many more in the upcoming years now i wanted to cut open this fruit and show you how it looks like as you can see here this has large seeds this is a very sweet fruit it's almost like eating a fruit that has brown sugar in it very sweet fruit very delicious very unique flavor and as you can see here these fruits are completely ripe after you harvest them it takes about a week or so for them to ripen off the tree and it's also known by a lot of different names that you can see here but all in all we were very excited to grow and eat this fruit from our garden moving on to sour cucumber our sour cucumbers were growing and this was probably the last harvest that we would get from these plants and you can see here these cucumbers are very beautiful looking they are quite sour and you have to cook them to eat it's generally not eaten raw so very unique type of cucumber and you really have to like the taste of this cucumber it is quite unique quite different compared to a regular cucumber but it's also very popular in a lot of recipes which is why we try to grow it this year and most of the plant has died down now the leaves have become brown and we're just harvesting the last few of these sour cucumbers But you can look at a harvest here beautiful looking cucumbers this was very easy to grow and very delicious as well eggplants we were growing multiple varieties of eggplants this is the aswad eggplant as you can see here we grew a few of these eggplants along our raised bed as you can see here and these have yielded quite big eggplants and this eggplant variety is quite vigorous in growth it does produce a few eggplants but they are quite large in size We were also growing the medium Indian purple eggplant on the raised bed and as you can see here these eggplants look nice as well they have a nice bright purple color and they are quite delicious too and the third variety of eggplants that we were growing were the Indian small eggplants this is a heirloom variety that I've been growing for quite some time and you can harvest them when they are smaller like these or you can wait for them to grow to a bigger size as well if you're harvesting them smaller like these you can stuff them with spices and then shallow fry them to create some amazing stir fried egg plants and these plants will grow for quite some time as you can see here the plants are still growing strong and they will continue to grow for quite some time and these egg plants are quite beautiful looking you can look at the harvest here we got a lot of egg plants from this raised bed and this is the harvest of the purple egg plants as well as the aswad egg plant once again beautiful looking egg plants and we were back in just a few days to harvest more of the small indian egg plant variety as you can see here these egg plants look quite nice and here is our harvest
Moving on to the hummingbird tree leaves harvest. Now this is a plant I've been growing almost all year this year. And you've been looking at me harvesting leaves of this tree almost every month now. And this is a very nutritious plant. The leaves are loaded with vitamins and minerals. Extremely good for your health. And they're also very delicious. And in the recipe section, you will see a recipe for the hummingbird tree leaves in this episode. And after you harvest the leaves, just remove the leaflets like you see here. Just a few stems will give you a lot of leaves. And this is a very tropical plant. It does grow well in the summer season here. You can look at a harvest. Beautiful looking hummingbird tree leaves. Hyacinth beans. Our hyacinth bean plant was growing in the ground and it yielded a lot of hyacinth beans this month. The hyacinth bean plant loves the summer season and you can see the plant has grown quite tall, quite big. In fact, I will be trimming this plant very soon because this plant has grown really big now. But you can see we are harvesting all these beautiful hyacinth beans. Once again, these beans have to be cooked before eating. And the plant has gotten so large now in the last couple of years that it needs a heavy pruning. But you can see all these beautiful pods that are extremely delicious. And once again, this is an acquired taste. I would highly suggest trying out eating hyacinth beans before you start growing them. But we just love our hyacinth bean plant. It has been yielding a lot of hyacinth beans for us this year. And you can even individually pick the pods instead of cutting the whole cluster of pods. But either ways, one plant will still give you a lot of hyacinth beans. And you can look at our harvest of hyacinth beans here. Ivy gourd, also called Tindora. Our plants were growing everywhere. This one is growing on the ground. And as you can see here, it's yielding a lot of these ivy gourds. You can see some of the leaves have dried up quite a bit. And this is because we had a heat wave in September. Yes, we did. And we are due for another heat wave this month in September. But you can look at the ivy gourds here. They are quite long, quite beautiful. This is the long ivy gourd that's growing in a container. And this one is an ivy gourd that's the shorter variety. That's also growing in a container. And we did get quite a lot of ivy gourds from all these ivy gourds combined. You can see these small or short ivy gourds. They are quite productive, but look different from the long ivy gourds. And this plant doesn't need a lot of care, no fertilizers, just watering is enough with some warm tea every 15 days. And on our raised bed, we also had the shorter variety growing. This has grown quite vigorously as you can see here. And this plant is loaded with ivy gourds. The benefit of having the shorter variety and the longer variety is that the shorter variety is a very heavy producer. So you can get a lot of ivy gourds from this variety. And the longer ivy gourd is productive too. It's just that it doesn't produce as many ivy gourds as the smaller variety that you see here. Taste wise, they are quite similar. They both taste excellent. And this is another vegetable that has to be cooked before eating. And it tastes more like a sour or spicy cucumber. In my opinion, it's a very unique taste. Some people also compare the taste to eating fish. So you can consider this as a vegetarian option of eating fish if you like fish. So I would highly encourage you to try this out first, see how you like the taste and then start growing it in your home garden. But this ivy gourd plant is just loaded with ivy gourds as you can see. And we also had the longer variety, just two plants on the raised bed which was also quite productive, but not as productive as the smaller variety as you see. And you can look at our harvest here, beautiful looking ivy gourds. And here is another harvest, just in a few days. So all in all, September was a great month to grow ivy gourds. Moringa. We had our Moringa tree that had become huge. And in fact, it's about 30 feet tall now. And you can see a lot of Moringas on this tree. And we were harvesting this using a custom Moringa picker that I made by just duct taping a hook onto a PVC pipe, as you see here. And it's quite effective for harvesting Moringas that are quite high up. Now I will be pruning this tree sometime in the winter season when the plant is dormant. 
but for now the plant has grown huge and has produced a lot of moringa pods as you can see here now moringa is a superfood it's loaded with vitamins and nutrients and you can look at our harvest of the moringa pods here beautiful looking moringas okra our emerald okra plant was growing on the raised bed and as you can see here it's almost 6 foot tall and is yielding a lot of okras so we went ahead and harvested these okras as soon as we could these okras grow very fast in fact you could see small okras during the day in the morning and by the time it's evening they would have grown to its full size they grow very vigorously in the summer season you can look at our first harvest here of these emerald okras and in just a few days we were back at harvesting more and we got a few very hot days here in southern california in the month of september and that caused these okra plants to grow very vigorously as you see here okras love the hot weather when it's in the 80s and 90s they just love it and you can see it is showing an effect on our okra plants we are getting a lot of okra pods as you can see now the emerald okra is one of my favorites as far as taste goes these are excellent tasting okras they have a very good flavor and they are also very productive so i have been growing these okras in raised beds and getting quite a good harvest from these and these plants can shoot off from being a foot one month to almost 4 to 6 feet in the next month ours are about 6 to 8 feet tall as you can see we also had the nombo giant okra in a container and this is another okra variety that i like especially for containers and you can look at another harvest here beautiful looking okras and this is another day of harvest for the emerald okra as you can see there are a lot of okras already just from a few days ago and we were back at harvesting them now these are a little bigger in size you can harvest them when they are a little tender so that you get the best flavor out of your okras and the nombo giant variety is not only suitable for containers but also for raised beds or in the ground they are long okras they are quite tender quite nice if you harvest them early and here is a harvest of the emerald okra and the nombo giant okras beautiful looking okras pomegranates we had our parfianka pomegranate tree growing in the zen area or the buddha area of our garden and it was time to harvest these pomegranates before the squirrels got to them and we are starting to harvest these as you can see here beautiful looking pomegranates there's one that the squirrel has already eaten the large one and we were able to harvest five pomegranates from our tree this month but these are beautiful looking pomegranates ridge gourd also called chinese okra if there was one vegetable that can be called as the star of the month it would be the ridge gourds our ridge gourd plants were very prolific we were able to harvest a lot of ridge gourds from our raised bed area the trellis that runs between the raised beds and we were quite happy with the amount of ridge gourds we got from these and we were able to harvest a lot of ridge gourds only to come back in the next few days and see even more ridge gourds here on this plant now ridge gourds are another vegetable that you cannot eat raw you have to cook them and it's a very delicious vegetable and there were two varieties of ridge gourds that we were growing as you can see here this is one variety and the other variety is a longer one but both these varieties were very nice they yielded a lot of ridge gourds you can look at one more harvest here from these ridge gourd plants and once again in a few days there were more ridge gourds growing on this plant and here is yet another harvest snake gourds our snake gourd plants were towards the end of the season and you can still see some snake gourds growing once again a vegetable that needs to be cooked before eating and is a very acquired taste snake gourds are very popular in the southern indian region and you can see the snake gourds look like a snake hence the name snake gourds and here is a harvest beautiful looking snake gourds moving on to strawberry guavas 
One of my favorite fruits to grow in the garden are strawberry guavas. This is a very tropical fruit, soft flesh, very sweet, and hard seeds. But you can actually just swallow the seeds when you're eating the fruit. And you can see how they are produced in bunches here. Lots of strawberry guavas. And the taste is just excellent. I can't describe the taste of the strawberry guava, but it's a very tropical taste. I really love it. So if you can get your hands on the strawberry guava plant, please do grow it in your home garden. You will be pleasantly surprised. And look at our beautiful harvest here. Taro root. We had our taro plants growing in a container. This is a whiskey barrel container. And these plants have been growing for quite a long time. You might have seen this in my container tours every month. The taro root plant has been growing for quite a long time. And you can look at the taro roots here. Beautiful looking taro roots being harvested. And the taro plant does need a long growing time. It takes quite a long time to grow. Anywhere between 6 to 8 months is ideal. And once you harvest the taro roots, you can keep the roots. And you can actually replant the top of the plant that has the tubers. And it will keep producing more taro roots in the next season. Now we had this one purple taro root plant that was a newer plant. It was a younger plant and it has not produced a lot of tubers. So we are going to just replant this with this extra tuber that you see here so that it grows into a new plant and we can have more taro roots of this variety. And this is the green taro root variety, the green stem taro. And you can see here the root is quite large. And the larger the plants are, the more roots it will have and the more taro roots you can harvest from these. You can look at the bottom here, beautiful looking taro roots, quite big in size. Now the taro root plant does need a lot of water. So make sure that you are providing a drip irrigation system or if you are manually watering your taro root plant, make sure you provide it a lot of water. You can see how moist the soil is and it has a lot of organic matter, a lot of worm castings that resulted in these beautiful looking taro roots that you see. And you can see here there may be some taro roots that are embedded inside the container. They are still quite shallow but you do have to feel around the container and dig them out. And this is our final taro root plant. You can see once again there are quite a lot of taro roots at the bottom. And we are going to be collecting each and one of these precious taro roots. And these taro roots are quite smaller compared to the ones you get at the grocery store. As they are grown organically, they are more flavorful compared to the ones you get at the grocery store. So I highly recommend you grow taro root at home if you can. The harvests are very fresh, very delicious. The ones that you grow at home taste way better than the ones you buy at the grocery store. Once the harvest is complete, we are just going to settle the soil in the container and go ahead and wash our taro roots. Now I just use a bucket and I spray water on the taro roots to wash them. And once they are washed, I take it in a tray and then use the same water to water my plants. That way I am not wasting any water. And after washing, you can look at our harvest here. These are absolutely beautiful looking taro roots. Tomatoes. September was still a good month for tomatoes. With our new tomato patch that had volunteer plants growing from the compost. So I really don't know what variety of tomatoes these are. Look at our harvest here. Beautiful looking tomatoes. And this is another round of harvest from the raised beds. From the volunteer tomato plants. And I was quite happy with the results I got from the volunteer tomatoes so far. They yielded quite big tomatoes. Very juicy tomatoes as you can see here. You can harvest the tomatoes when they are slightly yellow in color, as you can see here, and they will ripen inside your home. We also had the heirloom Indian tomatoes growing in a container. And we are harvesting a few of those as well. You can look at our harvest of tomatoes here, beautiful looking tomatoes. And we also had Roma tomatoes growing in our self-watering container, as you can see here. And these are beautiful looking Roma tomatoes. And you can look at our harvest here. Quite good tomatoes. And these are the Indian heirloom tomatoes in the container. 
So all in all, the month of September was a great month for growing and harvesting tomatoes from the garden. And now let's take a tour of our garden, beginning with the raised beds. In the first raised bed, we have a lot of sweet potato plants as you can see here, a lot of tomatoes as well. We have multiple tomato varieties here, all growing okay. And right next to that, we have our okras. Now these okras are the emerald okras and you can see how big they've grown. They're growing really well. They love the hot weather. And the bean plants, we trimmed down the bean plants last month and they've grown back quite well, although not as prolific as what it was initially, but still doing okay. We have all our eggplants in the next bed. We have the medium purple eggplant as well as the small Indian eggplant all growing on this raised bed. And you can see there are still a lot of eggplants being produced. The weather is still warm and nice for growing eggplants. We have brassicas on the other side. We have covered it with a net to prevent the bugs from getting in. And let's take a peek at what we have here. We have a lot of brassicas, kohlrabi, cabbage, broccoli, cauliflower, all brassicas planted here. And hopefully they'll grow soon. The weather is cooling down now, so this is a good time to grow all these brassicas. We have our ridge gourd plant. As you can see here, the ridge gourd has grown quite a lot. And as you saw in the harvest, we got a lot of ridge gourds from this plant. We have our volunteer tomato patch. These are all grown a single stem. And then we have some space here where we will be planting some more cabbages this month. On the last raised bed, we have protected this with a burlap cloth. These are all fall veggies. And the temps are quite high right now. But let's take a peek inside and see what's growing. We have radishes, followed by some carrots, beets, and then the row just repeats. So we have carrots, beets, and radishes growing in this raised bed. You can see some taro plants at the end as well. And our ivy gourd plant on the back has grown quite well. Again, it loves the hot weather and it has produced a lot of ivy goats. And that completes the tour of our raised bed garden. Let's now move on to the containers on the side. We have our 4-in-1 apple tree and some beautiful flowers below that. The vinca flowers add a nice accent. We have our firecracker plant that's now growing well in this pot, followed by radishes. We then have our black moon eggplant, which is overwintered from last year and it's producing some eggplants here. Followed by our Indian heirloom tomato, that's now again grown as a single stem. And the mint plant got a haircut and hopefully this grows some new mint leaves very soon. We have our Santaka chili plant. You saw us harvest and prune this plant last month. We then have our holy basil plant which is quite stretched because of the summer heat. And then we have our turmeric plant that's growing well, but again, it has a little bit of stress from the heat. And our galangal plant, which is thriving in these hot conditions. We have our mission fig tree growing in this container, doing quite well. And now let's take a look at the containers on the other side. In the first container, we have our pepper plants growing. One of the pepper plants had some disease, as you can see, not growing that well. We also sowed some cilantro seeds on the side. They're doing well now. We then have our okra plant, the Nombo Giant Okra. That's grown quite well. You can see a lot of okra pods here. Followed by another Nombo Giant Okra. This is an older plant. Quite tall as well. We just sowed some asparagus bean seeds here. And you can see they have grown quite well. Hopefully we'll get some beans soon. We have our Egyptian walking onions. And you can see some of these onions are being produced on the top as you see here. Beautiful looking onions. And then we have our single stem tomato plants. These are the beefsteak style tomatoes. Quite big tomatoes. We then have our snake gourd plant. 
Now the snake gourd is quite slow right now. I left a couple of snake gourds to go to seed. And there are still a couple of snake gourds that are growing as you can see here. So the hot weather is definitely helping snake gourds. But as you can see a lot of leaves have dried up. We have another pepper plant. This is the big bertha growing in the container. We have our ace tomato plant which is grown as a single stem here looking good. We then have more okra plants as you can see here. These are the emerald okras. We have our ivy gourd plant. This is the long ivy gourd. It has grown quite well in this trellis that you see here. Our mint plant got a haircut once again. And hopefully it grows new mint leaves. We have our turmeric plant that's grown quite large as you can see here. Beautiful looking flowers on this turmeric plant. And this will be ready for harvest by winter. We just planted some potato onions here. I'm very excited to grow these. I'll keep you posted on how these grow. And just at the back, I wanted to show you the papayas. You can see a lot of papayas growing here. I'm very happy to see that all three of my trees are producing fruits. We then have more Nombo giant okras. As you can see, the plant has grown quite tall. With some flowers as well. Right next to that we have our bush bean plants. You saw us harvest these bush beans in the harvest section. And these are still growing okay. We have our broccoli plant. Followed by carrots. We planted a lot of carrots and it has been a long time. So these will be ready for harvest soon. We planted some dwarf kale plants here. As you can see a lot of insect damage on these plants. But hopefully they'll recover. Our taro plants have grown quite big. You saw us harvest taro and then replant the plants here. And they're doing well. And finally we have our aswadic plant. These two plants are growing quite well as you can see here. And on the other side we have our bottle gourd plant. That's now towards the end of its life. Followed by our early long eggplants. Now we harvested a lot of eggplants and this plant has grown back and is producing even more eggplants as you can see here. We have our ivy gourd plant that's been growing in this container for quite some time now. Doing okay. The pole beans that we planted are now growing quite well. You saw us plant the seeds last month and by this month you can see they have grown quite tall. And finally our longevity spinach plant is here. In the green stock vertical planter you can see that in the classic planter I have planted a lot of onions. You can see the progress on these onions. They are doing quite good now. The heat is still taking a toll on these onions but I am keeping them well watered. We also have our strawberry plants in the green stock leaf planter. And as you can see producing a few strawberries here and there. Once again a lot of dry leaves due to the heat wave we had. But the goal is to keep the plants hydrated as much as possible. So that they grow into good plants. But all in all the green stock vertical planter is a great system. If you haven't tried it out I definitely encourage you to get yours today. You will be very happy with how many plants you can grow in a very small space. And that completes the tour of our container garden. <laughs> And now let's look at a delicious recipe. Today we are going to look at the hummingbird tree leaves with lentils. For this we need 2 cups of the hummingbird tree leaves. 1 cup boiled lentils. A small scoop of jaggery or molasses. 1 teaspoon cumin seeds. A pinch of asafoetida. 1 teaspoon mustard seeds. 1 teaspoon split black gram. Some chilies, some curry leaves, and about half cup of shredded coconut. 
and a teaspoon of salt. Now we just heat up a little bit of oil in a pan and add the mustard seeds. We then add the split black gram, also called urad dal. We add the cumin seeds and then just stir them a little bit. We add the curry leaves. We add the asafoetida, red chilies, and then we just stir it a little bit again to mix it in. We now add the hummingbird tree leaves. We have removed and chopped it up a little bit. And then just saute these ingredients together in the pan for about 5 minutes till they are nicely mixed up and the leaves start cooking. We then add the jaggery. You can cover and cook till the jaggery melts or you can just remove the lid and then stir it in and the jaggery will melt slowly. You can also use molasses if you don't have jaggery. We now add the shredded coconut and mix it in very well. We now add the cooked lentils, which is basically lentils cooked with a little bit of turmeric powder and water and mix it in. And we will slowly add the lentils. You don't want to go overboard with the lentils, but you can take a little bit, mix it in and then add a little bit more lentils as the mix starts cooking. We add some salt. And now the mix is quite ready for some more lentils which we are going to add and mix in very thoroughly. And we are done. And this is a very nutritious dish, extremely delicious and is one recipe that I highly recommend you try. Now if you don't have hummingbird tree leaves, you can also substitute this for spinach or Swiss chard and the dish will be equally good. And now let's look at some things for you to do in your garden this month. We will look at preparing your raised beds for the fall season. The first thing we are going to do is add something that retains a lot of moisture in your raised beds. And for that we are going to be adding peat moss. So I've already added the peat moss. So you can see it on the raised bed already. Peat moss is a little hydrophobic. So break it up into smaller pieces and spread it across your raised beds. And this will ensure that a lot of moisture is retained on your raised beds. We will also be adding some planting mix. Now planting mix is nothing but a mix of compost and manure. It has a lot of organic matter that will add a lot of beneficial nutrients and beneficial bacteria to your soil. And once again we just spread it out evenly across the raised bed. We will be adding worm castings. Now this is something that I always add to my raised beds. It adds a lot of nutrients, it also helps the plant uptake a lot of nutrients and it also prevents insect damage on plants. The plants become naturally strong and can avoid a lot of the insect damage if a lot of worm castings are present in the soil. So if you are doing organic gardening just like me, make sure that you add worm castings. I buy mine from Vermistera. They are excellent quality worm castings and I have been using it for a very long time. And finally, we are going to add some straw. The straw will help retain moisture. It will protect the plants. And the last step is to water everything down. Make sure that everything is settled in. And after a few days, this raised bed will be ready for planting. So there we have it folks. Hit that subscribe button before you leave. And if you like this video, do give us a thumbs up. We'll see you again soon. Happy gardening.